The iPhone 13, 13 Pro and Pro Max are packed with hidden features that hardly anyone uses. Some of them are gimmicks, others can be very useful. Today I'm going to show you the 20 most useful but rather little known features of your iPhone. Let's start with how you can use iOS faster and more efficiently. When you have an app open, you will find a horizontal line down here. It's obvious that if you swipe up from here, you will close the app. But if you swipe sideways, you can quickly switch between open apps. There is another very similar feature. If you have a very long text or a long web page open, you naturally move up and down by swiping. But here on the side, you see a vertical line. If you tap and hold this line, it gets a bit thicker. Now you can drag the line up and down and move much faster within the document or website. There are also ways to move faster within the different menus. Let's say you're in a sub-menu in the settings. You'll find a kind of back button in the upper left corner. You tap and hold it and now all the menu entries on top of it appear, which you can now access directly. This also works in other apps, such as the Notes app. Actually, there is an undo function and a redo function within iOS. For this we open a text editor and enter a few words. You can undo the input by shaking your iPhone. But this works only partially well. It works better if you swipe to the left with three fingers. If you swipe to the right with three fingers, the entry is redone. Let's talk a bit more about text input. You may have heard that the magnifying glass is back. So if you tap and hold anywhere on the text, the area will be enlarged a bit and you can position the cursor precisely. But there is also a hidden trackpad. You open the keyboard and tap and hold the spacebar. Now you can swipe over the empty keyboard and move the cursor around freely. This way you can move freely and precisely in text even one-handed. If you often type one-handed, you can also position your keyboard better for this. You tap the globe at the bottom left. Now you see, apart from the possible languages at the bottom, one keyboard with the arrow pointing to the left and one with the arrow pointing to the right. If you are right-handed like me, you choose the keyboard with the arrow pointing to the right and the keyboard shifts slightly to the right. This way you can reach all the letters and numbers a little better with one hand. If you're at all like me and use your iPhone one-handed a lot, then I have some very cool features for you. As you probably know, your iPhone has a reachability feature. You swipe down on the lower part of the screen, then the app moves down and you can reach all functions with your thumb. For this to always work, it takes some practice. Depending on how you swipe, it doesn't always work. Because this is a bit annoying, I have activated this assistive touch button. I tap it once and the app moves down. But this button can do much more. I tap it twice and take a screenshot which is much easier and faster than using the usual two side buttons. When I tap and hold it, a menu opens that I can configure to my liking. I can add quite a few functions and gestures here. The possibilities are endless. For example, here I added a button to activate Shazam and music recognition. You activate this assistive touch button in the settings menu, then accessibility, then touch, and then you will find assistive touch right at the top. Here you can configure the different actions like single tap, double tap or long press. One of the coolest new features is the drag and drop feature. This works with photos, files, links or even text and even a mix of these elements. For example, you open a website, tap on the link and drag it slightly upwards. Now you can switch the app as already shown and insert the link into a message for example. As I said, this also works with files. You select a file in the files app drag it slightly up or down. By tapping on other files with your other hand, you can select multiple files at once. You can now move them to another folder or copy them into a message. It is always important that the green plus appears. This indicates that pasting is possible. Also text can be easily marked and then moved. And it also works with photos. I've already shown that in more detail in my camera tricks video. You can also select multiple apps this way and then move them to a different page of the home screen for example. And since we are talking about the home screen, you now have several ways to move and organize the pages of your home screen. Tap and hold an empty area. Now tap on the dots at the bottom of the screen. The individual pages of your home screen will appear. You can now move them back and forth or deactivate them, that is hide them. You do that by tapping the check mark. Let's say you need certain apps only during your vacations then you can hide the corresponding page for the rest of the year. You can also delete the disabled page by tapping the minus. The corresponding apps that were on the deleted page can still be found in the app library. 
The control center also has hidden features that you wouldn't expect at first glance. If you tap and hold the flashlight icon, you can gradually adjust the brightness of the light. If you tap and hold the timer icon, you can activate a timer in a matter of seconds. Swipe up and down to set the duration. I also added a quick access for Shazam, so you can find out the title of a song through the control center. If you tap and hold the icon, you also get a history of all recognized songs, which can be very useful if you have forgotten certain titles again. You add the music recognition in the settings under control center. As you can see, you can add many other features here like an Apple TV remote, dark mode or even the ability to change the text size. What is meant by text size? Let's add it and then I'll show you. Now let's open an app, for example the notes app. Now if we open up the control center, we can use the text size icon that now appears down here to adjust the text size. And what's special is, we can limit the adjustment to that particular app. So for example the notes app. This can be quite useful, because this way you can customize each app according to your needs. Right next to the control center is the notification center. Here there are two somewhat hidden features that are very useful. If you swipe a notification to the left and tap options, you can mute notifications from that app for an hour or even a day. This is interesting if you have more important things to do at the moment, but don't want to miss out on the other notifications. If you are at all stressed out about receiving notifications all the time, you can schedule a summary. For example, twice a day you will receive a summary of all notifications and the rest of the time you will not be disturbed. You can specify here exactly which apps should be affected. This is a pretty neat and very useful feature. Let's say there are one or more people you contact very frequently. You now have the option to create a widget for these people. This way a message or a call is just a tap away. To do this, tap and hold the free area on the home screen. Then tap on the plus in the upper left corner. Under contact, you can now decide if the widget should contain one, four or six people. After you have made your choice, you can select the person. And you have much faster access to your favorite contacts. But what if your closest friends and family sometimes get their hands on your iPhone and use it, but shouldn't see certain things? There are several ways to hide or password protect things on the iPhone. For example, you can hide a photo pretty well by opening the photo, tapping on share and then selecting hide. The photo will be moved to the hidden album. Normally you find the hidden album at the bottom of the albums under utilities. But even that you can hide. You can do this in the settings of the photos app by deactivating hidden album. Now the photo can only be found by real iPhone experts. You can also protect a note very well. You can do this by tapping and holding your important note. Now select lock note. Here you can enter a password or protect the note with face ID. This way the note is only accessible to you. And the notes app now has another powerful feature with live text. In my camera tricks video I already showed how live text works within the camera app. But you can also use live text to enter text directly. To do this tap and hold an empty area within your note. Now select the live text icon. Your camera image will appear instead of the keyboard. The text will be recognized and inserted in the preview. If you tap insert, then the text will be inserted. If you tap on the live text icon again, you can refine the selection and only then complete the input. It's incredible how well this feature works. By the way, you can use it not only for the notes app, but whenever you enter text. So also in the messages app, Google Docs or WhatsApp. As you can imagine, there are also a lot of interesting features in Safari that you wouldn't notice at first glance. These are the most useful ones. If you tap on the AA in the address bar, you can get a privacy report. Here you can see which websites and trackers have tried to collect data about your browsing activity. This is an interesting overview. If you have multiple tabs open, which is usually the case, you can easily switch between them by swiping left or right on the address bar. In general, you can now organize your tabs in iOS the way that works best for you. You tap on the tabs icon in the lower right corner. Then you see all open tabs. If you tap and hold one of the open tabs, you can move it as you like. But what is even more interesting, you can create your own groups. In the overview of your tabs, you can see the number of open tabs and an arrow at the bottom. You can tap it and create a new empty group, for example work or news. You can also create a new group for all open tabs. This way you can organize your tabs by content and have a quick organized access. By the way, if you tap and hold the tabs icon, you can close all tabs with one click. And believe it or not, also new is that when you drag the open website down, it refreshes. You can tell by the spinning icon here. This has long been solved this way in various apps. 
but it's new in Safari. It can also be incredibly useful to save an entire website as a PDF with two clicks. To do this, you'd better switch to reader mode first by tapping and holding the AA button. It will now turn black. Now simply take a screenshot. Up here, you can select full page. Now the whole page will be saved and not only your screen. With done, you can save your PDF to files. With share, you can share it via AirDrop or mail. My last tip for today is about a feature that has been around for a few years, but is still somewhat underrated, shortcuts. With shortcuts, you can combine several actions into one shortcut and execute them with one click. I already showed you the best camera shortcuts in my camera tricks video. You can create your own shortcuts in the shortcuts app, but there are also predefined shortcuts that you can find in the gallery, like remind me at work, which sets a reminder that only activates when you are close to your office, or break timer, which activates a preset timer with a tap so that you can always take breaks of a predefined length. You can also download shortcuts that other users have created, like this one, Amazon price history. If you are on Amazon and are looking at a product and want to know if the price is really good, Go to share and select Amazon price history at the bottom. Now the product opens on the price tracker website Camel 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 and you can see how the price has changed recently and if you are really getting a good deal. By the way, you can find Amazon links to my favorite iPhone accessories in the video description. Ok, I think that's enough for today. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback. There will be more iPhone 13 and 13 Pro videos to come, so stay tuned and see you next time.